Hi! Welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about five things I wish I knew before starting gymnastics as an adult. So some background about me, I never did gymnastics as a kid, I really, the only thing I knew about the sport was that you learn how to do flips, which I was totally game for, but I didn't even know the difference between cheerleading and gymnastics. I thought they were the same thing. So that's where I was coming from, that's how little I knew about the sport going in. If you're an adult looking to start gymnastics for the first time in your life, this video is for you. I certainly wish I had it before I started. Number one. First thing I wish I knew was to wear tight clothing to practice. Now this kind of seems like a no-brainer because most athletic classes require you to wear tight clothing, but the kind of clothing that you really need for a gymnastics class is even tighter. Like not all clothing that flies for a standard fitness class will fly at a gymnastics class. For example, I have this pair of shorts that I've worn for a lot of different activities, cross country, basketball, soccer, tennis. They're lightweight, breezy, stay on, great, no problems. But once I started working backflips in them, they immediately became a problem. I was practicing backflips off the end of the tumble track one day, and those pants just could not withstand the forces of the universe and fell off. Rather flew off. I honestly think it's because athleisure brands are trying to make clothes feel comfortable and look good, rather than first priority hold up in a high intensity atmosphere. You won't have a muffin top, but you also won't have your dignity after a few backflips. And that's why gymnasts wear leotards. But apparently it's weird for adults too, which is unfortunate. I asked my coach about this and the face he made made it clear he preferred if I wore pants instead. So moral of the story, wear super tight fitting clothing top and bottom cause you don't want it going nowhere. Number two, get a coach or take a class. Back in 2013, I had tried learning acrobatic stuff without an educated, trained professional teaching me, and it was a disaster. That's exactly how I got my back injury. Looking back on it, I'm surprised I didn't get hurt even worse because I was training in a room that was half concrete and half hardwood floor without an instructor spotting me trying to keep me safe. And that is also how I realized my own mortality. I am not bulletproof. I know people who have trained with mattresses or pillows and learned some crazy skills that way successfully without getting hurt, and that is absolutely awesome. But I do think for the majority of people, that probably wouldn't work out so well. So I do recommend getting a coach or taking a class, just having someone to spot you to make sure that your head doesn't crack the concrete, totally worth it. Unfortunately, in my community at least, there isn't a really good adult gymnastics program available. If you do find adult gymnastics classes, in my immediate area there aren't really many, but if you go outside my area, you do find them. They all typically have the same general structure where it's basically all levels. There aren't individual levels, everybody including X top level gymnasts to total newbies and everyone in between comes together in this class with one single instructor who goes around and helps individual people with what they're trying to accomplish. If you really only need the time and equipment with the occasional spot, that format is perfect for you. But if you're a total newbie like I am, you might not even know what to ask for, in which case it's not as good. For example, I didn't ask for a spot for the first three weeks because I didn't even know that you could ask for a spot. Like I didn't even realize that was an option because I was that new to the sport. And then the last thing that doesn't work for me personally is that the classes are always after the kids' classes, so they're really late at night typically, which is just really hard for me to manage because I'm so much so a morning person. In. Even better than a class, if you can find an affordable private lesson, it is so worth it because as a newbie, or at least in my experience as a newbie, you need a lot of hand-holding. I was fortunate enough to find an instructor willing to teach me that didn't cost me my firstborn, which was awesome. Actually, I'm splitting the class with someone else, so it would be half my firstborn. Anyways, we chose the time so it's not super late, which is so great, and we get to completely monopolize the time of the coach. Because of that, I progress a lot faster than I think if I had just stuck to the classes. Totally worth it. Number three, don't copy the little boys and girls. Watching other people do a skill can help you visualize how you're supposed to do the skill, but when the person you're watching has drastically different capabilities from you, 
it might not be the best. For instance, little boys and girls are incredible to watch do gymnastics. They're so elastic and bendy and lightweight. Even when they totally eat it, it really doesn't faze them at all. <laughs> By comparison, I'm an enormous giant who has already done 20 years of damage to my body and is highly prone to injury. So why in the world would I copy what they do, right? For instance, learning back handsprings. So if you watch a little kid do a back handspring, they basically bend in half backwards and it looks crazy. And when I saw them do that, I thought that was how I was supposed to do it. But my coach informed me that you really don't need a bunch of back flexibility to be able to do a back handspring. You can actually do a back handspring without any back flexibility, which really surprised me. There's multiple ways to learn how to do a skill and multiple ways to do a skill. So your spine doesn't have to be made out of Gumby like the seven-year-old contortionist you saw at the open gym. We're leaving, right? Number four. Don't beat up your coach. When you do get a coach and they inevitably tell you to put your arms by your ears, please listen to them. If that's the only thing you remember, you'll be much better off than when you started. Guaranteed. Because the last thing you want to do is clip your coach in the face with your elbow when they're trying to help you out and spot you. And that might seem like an easy feat to accomplish, but believe me, when you're learning a skill or learning anything really with multiple complex parts, it's really hard to remember to do all of those parts at the same time. For example, with a back handspring, if your coach tells you to keep your arms by your ears and you're only concentrating on that, yeah, you're probably going to get it. But if you're trying to do that as well as keep your core engaged and push your shoulders back and stick your butt out, you're probably going to lose a percentage of your arms by your ears. And that's just the nature of the beast, right? It just takes time to get everything working at once. But believe me, it sucks so much when you hit your coach in the face. I've done it three times and each time I've literally crumpled up from the outside in and just died. His face always gets super red and this vein in his forehead, it just starts popping, you know? I can tell that the size of that vein is directly proportional to my future in flipping. Because if you keep beating on your coach, he's not going to want to coach you anymore. My coach is a pretty cool guy though, and at least outwardly, he always seems pretty cool when I smack him in the face. Though inwardly, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a ball of rage. Anyways, he always has me repeat the skill immediately afterwards again, but it's so hard because mentally I just get this block where I'm so nervous and so worried that it just gets way harder. Like I've had some freak accidents when trying to learn some of these skills. Like at one point I was doing a trick and sprained both my ankles and coming back and doing that trick again after spraining both my ankles was a lot easier than doing it again after hitting my coach in the face. And lastly, number five, if you're not feeling it, skip and rest. I've heard some mixed things about when gymnasts peak. I've heard that female gymnasts peak when they're 16 from some people, and others have also told me that they peak when they're 12. What? Crazy, right? I'm 28, so I'm for sure considered geriatric in comparison to either. And I can confirm doing these movements as an adult is definitely really hard on your body. <laughs> and I'm positive that they're way harder than they would have if I had learned it earlier in my life. As a teenager, I used to do a lot of athletic active things and go intense, go all out every day. Well, almost every day. And it was easy, recovery was fast. But I can tell now that my recovery process in general is a lot slower. Sometimes I wake up, I take like a step out of bed, my knees are popping, my hips are popping, and I'm like, nope, not today, girl, not today. And that's okay. Gymnastics is a high impact sport with high likelihood of injury. And it requires a ton of strength, full body. So ample rest and recovery is great, especially when you're an adult. Well, that wraps it up for today's video. I had a lot of fun making it. I also have a lot more points than what I discussed. Five just seemed like a good number for today. So let me know if you want to see more. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to help me out. And I'll see you next time.